Hello, I'm Rebecca the Maths Lady and welcome to video 13 in this series on teaching number to children ages 9 to 11. And this video is all about teaching equivalent fractions. In this video, I'm going to explain how we teach children to have a deep structural understanding of equivalent fractions using both the circular structure of fractions and a linear proportion bar structure. Then we'll look at some abstract methods of calculating equivalent fractions, the kind you typically find in textbooks or exam questions. And we'll look at how we make sure children can answer those questions, but they're still visualising what's going on. So if this video is a little bit easy for you, here's your skip link to the next one, which is all about adding and subtracting fractions. In terms of previous videos to watch, well, I'm assuming your children have had some exposure to understanding that fractions are about equal parts of shapes and the numerator tells you how many parts you've got and the denominator tells you how many parts the whole shape is split into and that your children have done a bit of work on mixed numbers and changing mixed numbers like one and a third into an improper or top heavy fraction like four thirds and that they've got a sense that a seventh is smaller than a sixth. We're going to recap those ideas in this video, but if they've never seen them at all, you might want to go back to the video for seven to nine year olds so that you know how to build those foundations from scratch securely. And here's a link to that video now. Right, let's get started. So your first question is, what are equivalent fractions? And the best way to give children a deep understanding of this is to start with circular representations of fractions and I recommend this resource this is pizza fraction fun by learning resources I just take out the game parts and use the pizza parts and if you get children building pizzas they can recap all the questions like how many sevenths in a hole how many sixths in a hole which is bigger a sixth or a seventh you can look at converting mixed numbers into top heavy fractions and so on with the pizza part so you can revise all that but then we want to move on to equivalent fractions so to do equivalent fractions if you start children building pizzas they'll get a sense that a quarter can be exchanged for two eighths and you still get a whole pizza and you want to zoom in on that here are two sixths and they are exactly so the same size as one third so if you had a pizza with a third in, it could equally have two sixths in. They are the same size, provided the pizza is the same size, which in this game, fortunately it is. Now the work you're doing with pizzas at this stage is not just working on equivalent fractions. Because you're working in a structural way, it's making connections between lots of different areas of maths. It's deepening children's holistic understanding of fractions, it's laying the foundations for work on pie charts and angles, so it's really worth spending a decent amount of time playing with these pizza parts at this stage. But we want to focus on the task in hand, and that is finding equivalent fractions. So you can just give a child or a group of children a box like this and ask them to find pairs of equivalent fractions. How many can they find? Can they find families with more than two fractions that are equivalent? If you've got more than one group of children, you can set it as a challenge or a competition, who can find the most? And if you've only got one box of pizza parts, of course you can organise a day where groups rotate through and each might have 10 minutes with the pizza parts to see how many pairs or groups of equivalent fractions they can come up with. And by the end of that exercise, they're going to have a really deep understanding of what equivalent fractions are, and they're going to have a lot of confidence in finding them and working with them. Now, with a topic like fractions, learning is incredibly powerful if you have two structural representations. And fractions is a classic one because it's a circular representation, and you can get another representation, either a linear one, which we're going to look at now, or with array. But we're going to look at the linear proportion bar structure today. It's the first time I've introduced it in these series of videos for children aged 7 to 11. And there's really only six structures that we're basing number on at this stage. And the other five have been in play for quite a while. The first one was number lines, which we introduced with the bead string and then looked at with a structured bar. 
And then we worked on the open number line where it didn't matter how far apart the numbers were, as long as smaller numbers were to the left and larger numbers were to the right. That was the first structure. The second structure was base 10 apparatus, which could be Dean's blocks like these, or it could be place value counters like these, or arrow cards. They're all representations of the base 10 structure. The third one was the part part whole model that underpins addition and subtraction. And that can be done with groups of objects or with number lines or with bar modeling. Fourth is a ray, which underpins multiplication and division. And that can be done with objects arranged as rectangles, but it can also be done with grids of squares. The fifth was the circular representation of fractions, which we've just looked at now. And the sixth that you need, which I'm introducing for the first time, is the proportion bar. Before I introduce it, here's a quick summary slide of those six structures in case you want to pause and look at them in more detail. And if you'd like to ask questions about them, please post your questions in the comment or come and chat to me live on Sundays at 9am British time. Right, let's get going with the proportion bar. Now, a proportion bar is essentially a fraction wall. If you've seen plastic or wooden fraction walls where you've got a bar cut in half and then a bar, usually a different colour, cut into thirds, a bar cut into quarters and so on, it is the same thing. But I'm going to introduce an on-screen version of that because it opens up so many more possibilities. So the website I'm going to use here is mathspot.com. Type that into the bar at the top. Then we go to manipulatives and they've got all sorts of digital manipulatives here. Loads of great stuff. I haven't introduced it before, but you might find it fun. We're going to go to bar modeling. So we click on the bar modeling option. Now bar modeling can do two things. It can be set up to do part, part, whole models where the bars would be different lengths from each other, but we're not using it for that purpose. We're using it for proportion bars and they all have to be the same length. So we usually expand the length of a bar to make it a decent size because we're not going to be putting lots of bars next to each other. And then you can duplicate that bar to make lots of bars that we can play around with. But the size of one is fixed. Each of these bars has a length of one. I'm just going to delete that one there. And then we can represent individual fractions. So if we wanted to show two sevenths, we could cut the bar into seven parts and that beautifully shows two sevenths. And we can also use um, proportion bars to show mixed numbers. So let's use this one to show two and a third. And that's nicely done there. And we could cut those top two bars into three parts each to show that two thirds is seven thirds. Not going to do that now. Going to go on and look at our target teaching topic today, which is equivalent fractions. Now, the easiest way to clear this is just to click on that menu bar and press enter. I haven't found a quicker way. If you know one, please leave it in the comments. So what we're going to do now is set up some proportion bars so that we can easily compare fractions and find fractions that are the same size. So we take a fraction like two thirds. You could make it even easier. You could choose a half. But if we then look at the second bar, I've just clicked on it to bring it to life. Well, if you separate into halves, then you haven't got an equivalence. If you separate into thirds, you have, but that's not very useful. So let's carry on. With quarters, there is no equivalence. If you follow down from two thirds, there's nothing there. But now we've got to sixths. Suddenly, there's a line in the right place, and that's at four sixths. So two thirds and four sixths are equivalent fractions. And you can prove that now if you go back to the pizzas and show that we're dealing with the same ideas and the same maths. Now let's look for another one. We keep increasing the number of parts past six or because we've got six. Eight doesn't work, but nine works. There we go. So six ninths is also an equivalent fraction in that family. 
And if you're setting this as a challenge for children, you might like to try and ask them what's going to be the next fraction in this sequence? How many fractions in this group will there be? Heck of a lot going on here and it's always great to get children thinking for themselves. Again, we'll clear that just by clicking on that and pressing enter. And let's have a look at another example. And just like with the pizzas, you can set this as a challenge for children, either working on their own or as a single group or in competitive groups. How many pairs of equivalent fractions can they find? How many families? And maybe you can give them up to 10 marks for 10 fractions in a family. But they can get the 10 marks more quickly if they can come up with a generalised statement that explains the complete family. Let's just push them, see how far they can go with their reasoning and their skills in describing their thinking. So we've got the same thing going on here. We're gradually increasing the number of parts in a bar and trying to find numbers of parts where you get a match, where there's a line in the right place. So here we've found that one quarter is two eighths, is three twelfths, is four sixteenths. Can you encourage them to reason about what's coming next? How many shaded parts there will there be in the next fraction in this family? If it's five, then surely there'll be five in each quarter. So that would make five twentieths. Is that right? Let's check it. There we go, and it is. And what's gonna come next? With these very visual tools, Children that you might not expect really can get to grips with the maths. OK, now let's have a look at some abstract questions which might look something like that. Two thirds is how many ninths? I would set this question for children who've just worked on those two investigations and I would expect them to be able to come up with an answer and be able to justify and defend their answer without them being taught an abstract method like you multiply the denominator by three therefore you have to multiply the numerator by three so that's going to be six it is of course six ninths but we want them to describe what they're seeing in their imagination rather than to learn this abstract method which at the minute is just a witch's spell we don't like spells we don't like recipes that just work because they work we want to understand what we're doing. So just to go back to the question, if you get children describing what they're seeing in their mind, either with a circle or with a bar, they should see each of the thirds being cut into three parts. Therefore, the two thirds that you want in your answer have each been cut into three parts as well. So that is going to be six ninths because there's three ninths in each third. So a lot of questions look like this, where either the numerator or the denominator of the answer, the target fraction is missing and you are multiplying by the same numbers because you're cutting each part, both the total number of parts and the shaded number of parts into the same number of parts to create an equivalent fraction, which is really hard to understand unless you've just done all that visual work and then it's okay because you can do it with pizzas or you can do it with bars and you can bring out the computer and you should. If children aren't following, let them use the apparatus or the interactive tool to show you what they mean. The other type of question you're likely to come across would be a question like this, four tenths equals two watts. So we can't multiply this time because we're not cutting pieces up, we are combining pieces. So each two parts become one part in the target fraction. Therefore, each two parts in your denominator, in your whole number of parts, 
have got to combine into one part as well. So if you've got 10 parts and two become one, then you're gonna have five parts in your answer. And of course you can do that with the pizzas and you can do it with your proportion bar online until children are totally convinced that they understand what's going on. And they should go back to their pizzas or their interactive tools until they are 100% confident that they get it and they are happy with these methods. Then you can summarize it as when you've got two equivalent fractions, either going this way or going that way, you have to multiply the tops and bottom by the same number because you're cutting them all into the same number of parts. Of course, you could get an equivalent fraction like this one, 6 fifteenths is how many tenths? And that's a real challenge. But if children have secure visual models to work with, they can find a way around this and they will. And they'll learn their own shortcuts. In this case, you can draw the diagrams and you can see that there's actually a common equivalent fraction, which is two fifths. And that can help. But sometimes people just imagine they're multiplying by one and a half, which doesn't quite make sense, but if you've got pictures, it makes more sense than if you haven't. Your extension work, well, that's been built into this teaching strategy already because you can just extend those investigative bits of work with the circular fractions and with the proportion bars and ask more and more challenging questions. Can children come up with a deep connected understanding of all sets of equivalent fractions? Can they explain their thinking so that it would make sense to someone who was really struggling? They're pretty challenging questions. That's the beauty of low floor, high ceiling, structural teaching. When you're working with structures and you really know what you're doing, the extension work just flows. And if that's not enough, why not try them with the question, can you find a fraction that doesn't have an equivalent fraction? Leave that one with you. Your takeaways from this video are that we need to review the basic ideas of fraction and then we build outwards to work really thoroughly with a circular representation of fraction to explore and discover equivalent fractions in a really challenging, engaging and interesting way. And then we do the same work but with a proportion bar where the size of one is fixed. And it's best to do that with an interactive tool online because it opens up the investigation to really, really deep thinking. And I suggested a free online tool at mathspot.com. But if you haven't got that, you can always make some proportion bars like a fraction wall out of strips of colored paper. And then when we move on to abstract questions where children are given a pair of fractions with one number missing, we want to make sure that we're always challenging children to describe how they got their answer. It's not enough just to say you multiply the tops and bottoms by the same number. They've got to have a visual way of proving that their answer is correct, not just a recipe or a spell, if they're gonna be great mathematicians in the future. And for this topic, your extension work is really built into the way that we're teaching it here. A low floor, high ceiling approach means that extension work can happen within the teaching. Thank you so much for taking the time to deeply understand how to teach this topic wisely and well, so you're laying fantastic foundations for the future maths of the children that you're working with. This is how we build a better world and more confident children who can understand it properly and make wise decisions. Usual requests, please subscribe to the channel. Please give us a like if you like the video. Please comment on it. And if you have any questions or suggestions for improvement, I really want to know. And please share it with your friends. There's lots of videos here now, so if you know anyone else who might find them useful, please let them know. And if you want to find out more, please go to my website, which is authenticmaths.co.uk. Or come and ask me questions live on a Sunday morning at 9am British time. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.